morning. This is Talk Story TV, and we have with us this morning Gabriel Navarro. And he will be uh, telling us about his adventures in the Amazon and also about his book of poetry. So, go ahead. Hello. Um, nice being here with you. Um, yeah, well, um, basically, um, I think maybe you could guide me a little bit with some questions. Oh, okay. Well, I'm very awesome. interested in your work with Shaman. Okay. Well, I spent a great deal of time in the Amazon um, when I was younger. Uh, when they're searching for, I don't know, maybe my my, my destiny, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of things happened during the time I spent there. I met a lot of people. I think the thing that impressed me the most, uh, the first time I went down there was, I was uh, in a kind of fishing expedition. And um, yeah, we organized. I, I, I started a business with my family about aquarium fish, actually with my brother. And, we were exporting a part of fish and we were buying the fish from, from fishermen, but we didn't actually know what, how to get it and so on. So one day we just decided, okay, let's go there and check it out. I'm pleased. And I went. And uh, when we arrived uh, to the, the I, I call it just the, the limit between the real and the fantasy, which is for me in, in Venezuela is the Orinoco River. And when you hit that river, everything changed. And um, it changed my life because that first time I see this guy wearing almost nothing, almost naked. And, and this, mm -hmm. this red color skin and he was fishing with arrows. And I was like, wow, what is this? I mean, I've never seen anything like that. And I was mm -hmm. very young. I was, I was 20 years old. And, I fell in love with it, the, the, that scene, that, 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 it was like returning to, to the root of, of what we truly are, like uh -huh. being one with the environment. And, and then I went to meet him, I was curious, and we chatted a little bit. And he had a very poor Spanish, but, but he could, we could kind of exchange, and then he fell in love. I have, I have a kind of like a handy harpoon with a, some kind of rubber band, and, and I showed him how to use it. He was like, wow, great. So he wanted to exchange with me for arrows in a boat made of wood, and mm -hmm. I did. Thank so you. we crossed the river the day after in a boat. There, there is this kind of like a ferry boat. It's like a flat bed of iron floating, pulled by a, some torque, and we crossed the river, we end up in, in, in this community, he invited us to spend the night there and then we continued the trip. So we have a dinner and we have this kind of connection thing, you know, but the day after I had to leave, so we left. And we went deep down and um, in the way back my car broke down, so I had to stay behind. And they left me in that community hmm. with a promise I'll pick you up. And they said, okay, great. And I was a guy from the city that had never been out like this. And uh, it was kind of a wild environment. I was camped next to a river in the hammock with a mosquito net and some plastic on the top for the rain. And I had no food, so I had to fish for food. And I had to hunt for food, and I didn't know how to do that. But... I was next to the community of this guy that I met before, and like that we started a relationship that lasted many years, and I learned a lot of stuff from, from them, and years and past, you, I moved was down. Was he a shaman or a fisherman, or both? I, th I think, I don't like to use the word shaman, and I don't like to call myself a shaman as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think certain people has a certain connection with the universe, and... Um, if you can tap into that energy, I, I, 
I think that the word shaman is misused. Uh-huh. And many people, oh, I'm a healer. Okay, here is that long list of them. And they cannot do anything. I think uh, a person who can be truly connected to the universe and be one with the universe, not master of the universe, but one with the universe, you can you can call it has certain mystic power that no every ordinary human being has. I met uh, after start living there. I met a, a very interesting guy, and he was a real shaman, and he was my master in a way to teach me certain things. And uh, the lesson, the first lesson that he taught me was, "You have a gift." He said to me one day. And as we have a gift, we have to give it as a gift. We cannot abuse it. We have to use it wise. And um, he was the kind of guy, he was working as a watchman in the, in the telephone, small telephone company in the little town in the middle of nowhere. And many people from everywhere will come to him for fixing uh, dislocations or pains in the bones and stuff like that. I was there actually because I heard about him and I had a lot of trouble sleeping in the hammock my first year in the Amazon and mm-hmm. I said, oh, this guy's going to fix my back. And he did. It was magical. This guy would touch you and do like, cut, 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 and then suddenly, wow, I was like, oh my God, this is great. I feel great. Mm-hmm. And then I... I I told him one day, I want to I wanna learn this. He said, you know how to do this already. But the question is, have you tried? And I was like, no. And I started trying, and, and, and I realized that my hands knew more than I suspected. And um, I, I could do this kind of like fixing somebody with fingers and hands and and I don't call it like magic, I just call it it's a certain technique that is natural within the, the human being. And, and if you really understand how it is done, you can, everybody can do it. So, I never done it for money. I, some people tell me, oh, you can make a lot of money for this, but no, not for money. I choose the people where I, which I want to help. Yeah. Basically. So that's what you mean by giving it as a gift? Yeah, exactly. How did he so, know that you knew how to do it? I don't know. He just knew. So it was kind of uh, interesting from, from, from my point of view. I, he knew a lot of stuff that I didn't know he knew. And uh, obviously he knew me. I had another experience as well there. I met some, some Indian guy. Uh, I was playing billiard in the Amazon with my friends and, and then we played with some locals and we won and they had to pay us money and they didn't want to pay it so there was a fight and the police came and they took us and they put us in, in the jail for one night. And when they dropped me down there, in there, there was this Indian guy sitting in one corner and he said, I know you. He said, how do you know me? Yeah, you're a shaman. And I said, oh really? Yeah. I said, okay, great. And then he started explaining me, um, there is something you have to do. You have to come to visit me in my community. You're going to get out of here soon. I'm going to stay here 18 days. I said, how do you know all this? Then he said, well, I want you to visit me because you have to do this as well. Uh, when you come to my community, I'm going to uh, get there is a special plant, and we're going to treat the... the some kind of extract they do with this plant. And he, he said, if you drink too much, you can die. If you drink too little, nothing's going to happen. But if you drink right, you're going to fall asleep. And when you fall asleep, you're going to go to the world above. They have a belief that, that there is three planes, the, the, the mm-hmm. three dimensions, basically the dimension where we move the dimension above and the dimension below. They don't call is that where he knew you from? No, he said that he met me he met me in the dimension above. Okay. That's what he said. And uh, he knew that he was gonna meet me there that day. 
So I was curious, and I went, and I did it. And I can leave it on till then. <laughs> you see, exactly, I see, I see promises. And you spend about 24 hours, basically out of your body somewhere, and somebody comes, and he shows you your life and beyond. Those were his words, and those are the words that I can tell you right now. And do you remember that happening, or you don't consciously remember that? Oh, I do. You do? I do remember everything, clearly. Yeah. Okay. So How about, do you remember anything. the time before when you didn't remember? I do, also. I remember everything. You remember everything now? Because when yeah, you first met perfect. him, you didn't remember meeting him. Yeah. Right? I never remember meeting him, ever. And uh, I met him in jail, and then after I get out, I, I came several times, and actually he was released when he said he was going to be released, and I was kind of, I, I was curious person, you know, and I saw a lot of things happening, and I was always uh, in the move to discover these things and to understand them, and, and I was always in the move to find this connection that I had with the place, with the nature, with, with, with the environment around me, and and um, all these perceptions that I was having about life and death and, 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 and the connection that I have with the universe so strong and, and that always pulled me back there, always pulled me to find this connection right now everywhere I go. And uh, this guy was something that was very interesting for me. I have many other shaman friends in the Amazon, in the Indian communities, and, I always visit them and I always went with them into the forest uh, looking for certain kind of herbs and certain kind of, of, of uh, they use it for medicine and uh, certain plants have certain powers to, to heal certain diseases and I, I was very interested into that and, and I work hard in, in Venezuela until we have the political problems that we have right now, uh, otherwise I would have stayed most likely. But you had to leave because you weren't a citizen? No, because I think uh, the country changed and, um, you know, politics is something I really don't, don't like. And um, I don't like to talk about them because I, I despise politicians and I despise the system as it is. I think uh, we live in a world where there is an elite uh, controlling everybody else, and we own the slaves. Yeah. Like it or not like it. Anybody that says that we're free is just full of it, you know? Yeah. There's no such freedom until you really embrace who you are and just face the consequences of who you are. And instead of that, everybody's just depending on money and, and, and depending on, I have a job, I have to live, I have to eat, I have to... And they don't pursue who they really can be and the potential they have. I, I believe we are born all creators when we are a child. We are innocent. We are pure of spirit and we have this connection and we are grown out of this connection with the education system that we have. We are outcast from our creativity with the idea that if you make a mistake it's that. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry but we learn from mistakes, we learn from choices, we are taught that choice is bad, we are taught that we have to follow certain rules and that's it. And we have choices to make and we have so many, you know, connect, we have a connection inside that we, we lose it when we, are, when we are in the education system and we grow out of creativity, we grow out of, of, of all the potential that we have. And how can we, we get back down. to that? How, how can we get back to that without going to the Amazon? <laughs> no, but, but I think the first thing that we need to understand is that we, cannot be, we should not be afraid of making mistakes. That's the first thing. And we have to understand that, that life is constant choice. And all the time, the universe puts choices before you. Because you're here to be tested. You're here to learn lessons. And these lessons can only be learned if you are open, if you are in a different mindset, in a different mind frame of, you know, if you are thinking, I am the master of the universe, I'm a, 
human, I'm the superior person, I'm the superior everything, mm -hmm. you are totally wrong. Mm -hmm. But if you're thinking that you are part of your environment, you're part of everything, mm -hmm. if people start thinking about compassion, if we start thinking about communicating, we, we lost our power of communication with other people. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can see very clearly now that, that, that we have different levels of different castes and different kinds of education. And, and, but long story short, people who is created is outcast or is, is I call it sticker. They put a sticker on you. you know? mm -hmm. And um, I think that's a big problem because I think everyone has this creativity within. It's just they are somewhere hidden, you know. And people should try to look for that child they have inside and let it out. And how would you how would you recommend they do that? Grab a guitar, mm -hmm. just try to play it. Get okay. a piece of paper, try to write, go outside to the nature and don't look at the nature from the shoulder down, but at the same level. Mm -hmm. Try to look at people to the eye, try to shake hands, you know. Mm -hmm. Don't look them from above or from afar. Mm -hmm. I think that, that would help a lot. And walk slow. Walk slow. Walk slow, I think. Yeah you would be able to see a lot more than living as fast as we are living at the, at the current time in history. People is missing the point. Yeah. 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 And have you written any poems about that? Well, um, every day it hits me in a different way. Mm -hmm. Some people say that I, I write a lot of sensual poetry. I think behind the sensuality there is there is something behind. You know, there, there is something there is a message always in my poetry. And uh, this message can, can hit you in different ways, in different times, in different perspectives. Every person has a different perception of what I write. Um, when I write I I, I just tap into this, this energy and, and I just start writing away and I don't stop until I finish and um, usually the process takes very short time and um, okay I, I can read you something I wrote yesterday give me one second please okay and um, I'm not, I don't know very well this poem but I'm going to do my best okay okay this poem is called I am I am just another piece of coal among the flames, witness consuming desire and shade, lost in the confines of another bonfire, untimely extinguished, dispassionate to wear and tear, carrying me in grace to ashes, laid and sorted, stirring. And that is, I am brief, simple among these mystical flames, getting poor through the days, brought in this short thing that I am, lying in the night and its memory, on this eternal fire that I call life. That's beautiful. So, uh, this they, one just hit me. Pardon? Did you write in uh, English or Spanish? English or Spanish. Well, I write both languages simultaneously, usually. And I post in my Facebook page the, uh, each poem that I write every day for a few days and then I take it down. And I always keep three or four poems in my page, people to read. I'm, I'm very open on that. And I, then I, when I have, well, at the moment I have enough to make like 10 books, but I'm, I'm going little by little, you know, mm -hmm. so it takes time. And um, at the moment I'm working on a series of three books. And my first book is uh, this one, The Wind and the Sea. Uh -huh. And okay. um, this, this book is about the heart. And um, 
I, I have a belief that if you want to start changing people to find this connection, the first thing that you have to unlock is your heart. Mm -hmm. And um, so this book is all about the heart. And um, some people think it's, they are very romantic, but at the end of the journey, and I can tell you by the experience of, of all those people who, who translated my books, and um, right now I have a, a very lovely lady, uh, Hiroko uh, Kura, translating my book in Japanese. Mm -hmm. And it was a journey for her. And my books are usually divided into seven chapters. And each chapter goes straight to one very specific uh, part of the journey. So each book is a journey on itself. And um, my second book is called um, Fire and Earth. It just was released a couple of days ago in Amazon. You can find it on my author page, all of them. That book is, um, as the title suggests, Fire and Earth, um, Poems and Reflections on the Nature of Desire. It's about desire, it's about the womb. It's about the power of, of creation that we have from the womb. It's about, it's, it's, a, it's my view of what love is about and how can we use it for creating mm -hmm. through poetry. Mm -hmm. Again, seven chapters and seven poems each chapter. Do you, what do you call those parts of the journey? Do you have um, steps or what? Do you have names for the parts? So the journey. Well, I call the heart, the wound, the, and the self is the, the last book of the series of three books. Okay. And this next book will be released on, I think, January, February next year. Uh -huh. And we are in the process of designing and, and, and selecting the poems that are going there. The book structure is already decided, seven chapters, seven poems. Um, so I, I believe if you, if you can open your heart and if you understand your sexuality and stop being afraid of it and embrace it in the proper way, you can start then tapping into the energy of your higher self. And when you establish that connection through these three points, then you can start looking at the universe into a different way. Well, into a different perspective. You can start looking at people into a different way. And um, that's, well, it's my life, basically, and how I, I get to tap into that energy. So I put it into poetry, and, and it's the way it is. Well, how about reading us a poem in Spanish? Oh, that would be awesome. In Spanish. Okay, I'm going to read you a poem from the book. Okay. ¿Qué soledad es esta en la calle oscura sin ella? Envuelto en el dolor del palpitar de mi pecho acelerado. Solo pienso en el silencio para traer la sed que vivir en el vacío inmenso de esta noche diáfana con ansias de despertar y que ella esté allí con el deseo de saber la currucada de mi inmensidad trato de subir al sitio que ella me dio y suspiro cuando la soledad está desbocada en mi retiro los sonidos nocturnos no se parecen a la quietud de otras noches esta noche la quiero cerca y me estremezco sin sentido Trato de alcanzarla, pero se aleja insegura. Trato de descifrar esta invisible tortura. Me lanzo a la calle, oscura de mi indecisión para no gritarle. Los pasos retumban con un eco tardío en mi tormento. Y es que no quiero olvidarla. Ni siquiera un momento. Quiero alcanzarla, pero más se aleja en la distancia. Solo queda el vacío de mis ansias de no saberla bien 
y me abrazo del aire por un respiro suyo que se evaporan los pensamientos, siguen girando como un torbellino de pasión y yo sigo aquí, en el mar de mi soledad. Thank you. So, yeah. So, well, um, I think um, poetry is the way I, I found to deliver that message in a way. I'm, I'm writing a book, uh, a different book, kind of book now at the moment. It's more like story, if you may say. It's something that I have ended since a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. And um, I hope to release this book by the end of next year. In the meantime, I, I have a lot of uh, books that, that I would like to release on, on the middle. There is a, a form of poetry that I created which is called Navarrete, obviously, and it's been a little bit, I would say, very successful. I, I applied in a contest of poetry in Spain with one poem of this form, and it was selected. I'm on the finalists. Wow. Uh, which I would like to announce here. I just got the news today, so I'm very happy about it. And, um, <laughs> Congratulations. And, uh, yeah, it's a very interesting form because uh, many people don't like the, the, the free form of poetry, they don't call it form. But this, this kind of form of poetry, um, I, I, I'm writing a book about it. And uh, if you experience this form of poetry, and I, I'd like to invite you to go to my, my Facebook page and uh, look in, into my notes. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is a very clear explanation how to create a poem with this form. And, and I call it some, sometimes like poetry for dummies because it's very easy to create a poem with this. Okay. And um, I had, um, had a dream a few months back. And I was shocked about this dream, and I thought, wow, I had to remember this dream when I was in the train. I usually do that. When I, when I have certain kind of dreams, I can control them, and I can take a kind of spectator seat and, and watch, or I can take active part and remember it. And in this dream, somebody approached me and gave me something. And I'm going to tell you what it is, but what I can tell you is the day after that, I wrote the poem, the first poem in this form, and uh, I was given the gift of this, this form of poetry. Uh -huh. And the, the, I can give you a little dance of it. The, when you write, it's, uh, it's composed of four stanzas, and it's designed in a way that by the third stanza, you have to use parts of the previous stanzas to compose the fourth stanza. And um, when you compose the fourth stanza, you type into that energy. I teach you how to tap into that energy through the process of writing the previous stances, and then you get this kind of like very strong message at the end. Wow. I'm going to try, um, try it. Yeah, please, I, I, I really would like... Exactly the same uh, spelling? Yes, Gabriel Navarro. You can, you can look me up as Gabriel Navarro. You can send me a friend request. If you are not friend with me, I'd be happy to accept you. Uh, also, I have my fan page as well, um, which is Gabriel Navarro as well. I, I am in Twitter, so if people like tweet, I sometimes I leave poetry from my blog, which is called Gabriel's Muse. Sometimes I just... So, well, I, I, Twitter is a very interesting tool because you're walking sometimes and suddenly some line hits you. Wow. And in the past, I was always rushing to get a pen and write it down. Or, and um, I think technology is allowing you to do a lot of stuff nowadays. So Twitter yeah. allows me to, these yeah. little lines that come and hit me in the middle of nowhere, I just, oh, nice. I got my telephone, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I put it there, I leave it there until the time comes that I will use it for a poem or whatever it is that you don't want to use it. So there you will get a lot of thought, a lot of different kind of writing. And uh, in my blog, I usually, my blog is uh, called gabrielnews.com. And um, sometimes I show a little bit of myself there. 
Sometimes I put a poem, sometimes I write a little bit more like spiritual or it depends on the mood on the day. Okay. And, uh, so I invite everybody to just go and visit and register okay. and enjoy and I invite everybody to buy my books and uh, my second book is just been released very hot. If you dare, go and buy it because I can tell that you will change your life in many ways. Great. <laughs> okay, well, thank you for being on our show, and I'm so happy you joined our showcase of guests, and that's another place that people can um, find Gabrielle's information, and that's available on our regular uh State our regular website, TalkStoryTV.com. Thanks for being Great. with us. Thank you for having me.